everybody, it's Sita Bin Kuni, your Art Sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint Little Red Riding Hood's red cloak. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He's going to be helping us with our live streaming painting event by tracking me with cameras, making sure you can see the colors I'm mixing on the palette, making sure you get up close shots of the brushwork so that you can create this at home. And to that end, if you check the description below, um, sometimes on mobile and stuff it can be hard to see, but there's little dots and it says more. When you open that up, it's going to take you to a link. If you go to that link, there is all of the materials you need to know about this project, even exchanges, there's extra uh, learning resources and references, and of course a traceable, which are in PDFs. So if you click the blue links, then it prints out your stuff PDF and it's all there right now waiting for you just to make this easier and more fun. And I'm excited. I'm cool. excited for this. You excited for this, job? I'm very excited. We do have picture in picture, as we like to do. There it is. And that can, helps you when you're painting along with me. Um, I do recommend that, you know, you print out your own reference like I have here. But that way, if you're painting with us and you don't have the reference, you've got a reference right in screen. And I'm kind of ready to get going today. Yeah, me too. I'm just, just like, let's red her up. I've been wanting to paint this for about six months, maybe longer. <laughs> yeah. But I was waiting for the season for it. So, <laughs> and I feel like we're here. Materials. We have a nine by 12 canvas board, right? So it's a small painting. It's not going to be too overwhelming. Assorted acrylic brushes. We also have, we also have <laughs> paint in the description below, so all the colors, but for starting the background, I have a little Indian yellow, I have a little Mars black that I thinned, I have Prussian blue, phthalo green, and I have a smidge of titanium white. So let's start putting in the background after we read our wishes. Yeah. Because of course we have wishes on our canvas. We had a wish for Diane who is wishing for her nephew to have healing and the family to be okay with all the stuff that's coming out of the hospital. And then for Joyce to find strength, she's going through a really hard time right now. She's dealing with a massive loss and just wishing her supportive and friends and strength to get through it. So you can add any wishes or intentions you want to your own canvas. We're going to paint these over and send them out into the world. I think I'm going to start with a number 30 uh, bright here. So this has a nice short handle and it's got synthetic filaments. I'm going to start painting in this cool background. I'm going to dip this brush in the water. And oh, yeah, and just because you, you guys are going to ask, it's a two hoot, I believe. A two hoot. I believe. That is my current belief. <laughs> so I'm going to take my Prussian. Oh my, we have a lot of people here with us. And I'm going to add a little black to it. If all you have is thalo, you can try adding a little black to your thalo to deepen it. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm going to say th there's a, a wonderful little message out here in our community. Hmm. Art Girl 75 says, thank you to all the light keepers. My dad is improving. Oh. And I want to say thank you to all the light keepers who also capture those wishes. That's a big deal to a lot of thank our you. community. We, we love that. So thank, thank you. you. We, we do. We appreciate yeah. it. So I'm getting just a smidge of white on the corners. You can kind of see there. It's just barely there. All my brush strokes are going to be diagonal. About this halfway point here, I'm going to kind of switch them to more of a green hue. And so this is how we're doing this. We're just brushing this down, brushing this down, letting it streak a little bit. We do want to cover the canvas, but we do want the streaks mm. because this is going to help us have the storm. Oh yeah. Loading back up, blue, a little bit of black and a smidge on each corner of white. And we're also going to be adding these like kind of fat little snow flurries. And then if you're, if you have a good splattering tool, we're going to do some splatter on this canvas too. Yeah. So she's going to be in some weather. Some, some weather. Mm hmm Le Pac de Lou weather. Oh. Dude, that movie was. <laughs> so good. So good. So good. So good. I just now, I, I, I still long for that jacket and hat. Best costuming. Cool movie. I mean, that's, oh. Sorry, movie references happen. Yeah, we're like pop culture. Sorry. If you if you didn't want any movie references, uh, that's not possible. Probably not. So I'm going to just keep brushing down. I'm going to try to make sure that my strokes are nice and smooth and diagonal, as you see here. 
It's beautiful. And it's going to create a lot of energy in this. The wrinkles of the cloak and the movement of the background create a lot of energy and drama in this piece, even though she's quite static. Yeah. Which is sort of exciting to me. <laughs> and yeah. the little smidgies. Karen says she's not going to be able to chat much because she's going to be painting along with us. So art high fives, Karen. Art I'm, high fives. I'm looking to seeing it. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yes, definitely come by and share, share, share. You guys are going to be so excited about the extra um, learning tools that I've included in this oh, lesson. The extra learning tools? I have some extra learning tools just to help out because um, I was recently helping um, somebody try to see a painting better. And I, in an effort to answer their question, came up with a new way of imparting the information. And I was like, oh, this would be good for the class just regular. Mm. So now it's a thing where it's appropriate. And just see, I'm just trying to cover my canvas, keep my streaks diagonal, create the energy of this background. Sometimes I'm on the flat to get a nice big wide dispersion and sometimes I go on the edge. Now I'm in this range right here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to wipe off a little bit and I'm going to start adding a little of this green into my Prussian blue mix. And I'm going to smidge it with my Indian yellow. If I get too much white in here, it'll go mint on me. So I have to be really careful down here. Now, can, let me, can I ask you something here about your... your mm -hmm. uh, uh, Caitlin was asking, how do you get your paints to go more than a couple strokes? I got my first golden paints, but I feel like they don't last as long as yours. So some of this is the brush I'm using. Some of this is the amount of fluid that I have on that brush. I'm lightening with the yellow. So you, you've kind of, go. you've gotten used to how much fluid mm -hmm. to the particular brush that you're using. and Yeah, there's a whole thing. So every brush holds a certain amount of water. In acrylic, this is critical because you want enough water, but not too much. Mm. And that's when the engineering of your tool starts to come into play or where it would matter. And... You know, it's not even that it's got to be an expensive solution, but it's got to be a correct solution. So, like, you're probably going to find that... Uh, I'm going to flip my canvas over so I have an easier time reaching my bottom. Like, our red-handled synthetics might hold, make the paint go a lot farther than a natural They're bristle. very firm. Um, you want a brush that's firm, that holds water, but not an excessive load. That's the problem with bristles is that... They hold an excessive load, and then when they get wet, they get soft, unless you get ones that are a synthetic mix. Gotcha. And I'm going to actually do a whole video. We're, we're remodeling the studio, and there's going to be a bunch of new videos coming in the new, new year videos? in the new studio. And I've been, like, making notes and writing scripts about how to show specifically those things. Why does my paint go further? What are the factors? Because when I face to face with somebody, I can usually fix that problem in a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. Like I figure out right, like what it is. Is it the paint? Is it the brush? Is it the water? And we figure out what's this, the canvas and we figure it out and we get it corrected in short order. But it's harder to do via video mm -hmm. because there's about six things that could be going wrong. And it's hard to know what of those things is happening to a person. Now, what, what brush are you using there? This, I love this brush. This is a number 30 Ruby Satin Bright. And it has a really nice filament in it. And it is for heavy bodied acrylic paint. It's like really engineered for that. Mm. And I'm, I'm a big fan of it. And this one is short handled. If you're painting at a table, um, it can be nice to do short handle brushes. And you may find you will have a preference to that because of your painting space. Now, does the is the is the, the is the size of the brush relative to the canvas? What you're looking at here is that the important part, or how do you mean? Well, uh, so. Uh, uh, China was asking, you know, what does the canvas and the brush size have to do with each other? What what is the relationship there? <sighs> so. What I would say is, is that you're picking a tool. I like to pick the right size tool for the job. So if I'm doing a big background, I'll pick a bigger brush. 
so I can get smoother, wider strokes yeah. and cover more um, depthly. If I'm painting a small area like inside here, I'm going to get a smaller brush, a smaller tool that doesn't make me struggle to get in those spaces. Gotcha. Um, there is some thinking, you know, a lot of people are purists and they're like, you use one brush, whole painting. And that's a thing you can do if that's something that you enjoy. I feel like that's trying to, you know, like being like one of those, I only cook with one pan. Um, yeah, I guess it you is could, a bit. You can do that. You can do it if you like. I can fix a car with only one wrench. <laughs> Sure. Right. Sure, you could. You could, but why would you? I'm not you? saying that there, no, there's art in it. There's a complete art and beauty to being able to pick up one brush and be able to whoosh, and whip I'm that out. Rinse this out. I'm, this background to me was really attractive, so I'm going to give it a little attention just to make sure that it's the finished, beautiful piece I'm looking for. So I'm going to put out a little more of my Prussian blue, yeah, I, which is a color I really like. There's some colors that I have that I really like because they create some beautiful effects on my paintings. A little more of this Prussian and some black and again a little smidge of the white so we can get the the streaks. Now, Just making sure that this is deep. Do you have any tips? Glory was saying that you really do a good job getting those strokes. Is there, it, what can you do? Do you have any tips there for people who are... <sighs> Is it, is it the directionality? Is it the length of the strokes? What it, is it? It, it is. So like if I were to be like this, yeah, I would have short, choppy strokes, right? Yeah. They'd be very textural. Um, here, I'll have to put some point on it for you guys to see it, and then I'll blend it out. See, if I was to go like this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one kind of stroke. It's kind of cool looking. But if I go like this, I get these long movement strokes. I see. So in art, there's um, texture, there's implied texture, which is the strokes where I make little strokes and they kind of make a pattern that you can kind of feel. And knowing what kind of implied patterns and textures you can make with your tools will help you a lot in, in creating effects. Probably we need to make a brush book so we know what our tools do for us. Mm -hmm. So we don't go buy new tools if we don't need them. And we go get the tools we do need if we don't have them. All right. So I'm going to rinse this off. Rinse. Rinse it out all good because I want it to last a nice long time. And I'm going to get out my number four cat's tongue. Da da dum dum. Gotta find it. Where did it go? You could use a filbert or a round for this next part. I'm gonna dip it in water and drag it off, and I'm going to make a little of. This is going to be titanium white in my Prussian blue, and it's gonna be just a little lighter than my background. And I'm going to make some of these marks that are coming down. I really liked these. They had different sizes, and I thought they were really cool. Yeah. To show the storm. When you come over in the green area and stuff, we're going to actually have to do a little trick here. Hmm. And when, especially when we're doing anything in the front where we switch to, like, maybe a zinc or something to create a sense of transparency and depth. Elba, <laughs> Elba asked an interesting question. Hmm. She says, hi, John. What's the difference between a Sherpazoid and a Sherpa uh, Sherpette, lol? <laughs> I always hear you say that. And I think it's, we allow our, our, our community to be self-identifying. <laughs> you, you, can, you can choose how you'd like to be, you know, are you a Sherpazoid or are you a Sherpette? Uh, you know. You light keeper. You're a light keeper. You artist. Artist. You know, you, yeah, any of those things. You just, how, are you, how, how you want to be today, you get to be. We'll just accept you for how you want to be. I'm going to just take some of these into this space. All right. I like that. I very much like that. It's really fun to have these little kind of action action strokes is what I would call these. Action strokes. Now I you like don't that. have to worry <laughs> about it too much in this area because we have a big figure we're going to stick in the middle. Oh, yeah. Now, because... I really want this. If you don't have a good splattering tool, don't do this stage. Oh. It's not essentially necessary. Yeah. You just need a tool that you're very comfortable splattering paint with. 
Mm. So I'm going to put out my fluid white. And I have a whole video on how to make splatters and stars. So if you want to know more about that, that's definitely on my channel. I'm going to kind of rub this in with my finger. And I'm going to just give myself some little snowflakes. So we have some that are in action, right? But I wanted to add some of this. Because I really wanted it to be a cold and blustery day. Yeah, those look sharp. And then here's a weird little trick. I'm going to take a little of my Prussian blue yeah. into my fluid white. Oh, can you push that forward a little bit there? Sorry. Yeah. And, and if you didn't have Prussian blue, what was your... Uh, you could take a little phthalo and mix black into it and get something that's a not terrible approximation. Hmm. So if you closed your eyes and squinted, it might mm -hmm. look, uh, look a little bit like it. Yeah. Cool. Don't, don't, like, don't let not having a red or a material or some element stop you from enjoying. <laughs> See, by making a slightly bluer mixture, I put some snowflakes in the background. Oh, yeah. Tiffany says, uh, hey, Cinnamon, you got to be careful because your, co your coffee mug says paint water on it and you're, uh, you're drinking out of it there. That could, that could be bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of your own creations, isn't it? Because that's what my life is like. <laughs> I'm loving it. I got to dry this. Yeah. You got to dry this. And then we're going to transfer the image onto it. Again, you don't have to do the snow part if you don't have a splatter tool. And if you do have my splatter tool, I know you love it. <laughs> so, yeah, that was splatter away. It's a good time to get it out and use it. Cool. Now you're going to dry that off, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, yep. I'm going to see if I can. Hey, look, I can. Push button. So uh, thank you guys for coming. Man, we have a great crowd. You guys, there's a whole bunch of you out here. We've got, we've got like 500 people. My gosh. Love having such a wonderful group of people to come and hang out. Um, it's just been, yeah, it's just, it's so lovely to have all you guys to chat with and chat. Let me say, if you guys have not come made it to one of our live shows to hang out in the chat, uh, you should totally do it. It is one of the things that I love to do is to come out and hang out with everybody here in chat. And and uh, we talk about all sorts of things that sometimes we don't talk about on the show. So you'll hear me laughing because uh, we've got this great, great stuff that we talk about on the side. So if you've not had a chance to come to one of our live shows... I highly would encourage you guys to try to make it out here on YouTube. Um, it's uh, it's a lot of fun, and and if if not, please leave a comment, and we we love to see you. Don't forget to sh post up your pictures. Um, you know, I love seeing those. You there, Cinnamon? I'm here. So I was uh I was just saying how much I I I love having people out here in the live shows, and if if you haven't had a chance and you're watching it in post, they should definitely come to a live show because it's uh it's something fun. I, I I like I like them too, and I don't even get to see the chat. You have the best time. Well, that you know, we're in 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 the next year. We're gonna work on getting some more interactivity here, so we can have some stuff like that. And you know, so what are you doing there? I am p applying my traceable. So I've taken my serial paper red. I put the bright red paper side to the canvas, and I'm taping it down in two places with no tack tape or low tack tape. No tack tape would be not tape. <laughs> that would be paper. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some no tack tape here. <laughs> oh, oh, the blooper reel would be amazing. <laughs> and I'm taping down my traceable in several places because once I start transferring this image yeah. on, I'm going to want to... Um, do, 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 do. Okay, step, step, step. I'm going to want it not to shift or move much. So I'm trying to put her over towards the left, right? Close to, maybe even closer to the front of the, see, I've got this lip and it messes with me, front mm -hmm. of the canvas. So some of her skirt I'll just have to hand work out. And I'm just trying to make sure that whatever I've got here is not going to shift on me. Thus, the tape. The the. You wouldn't even know tracing was this much trouble, but it is. But it, it's some, some tack tape. Some tack tape. 
some tack, man. Have you no tack? None. I have one. The only thing I don't love about the kit. Well, there's many things I love about <laughs> the canvas boards. But one of the things is that when you paint, you get wet paint on the sides that stays wet for a while. So you have to watch for those. Oh, yeah. Little moments that want to come and visit your canvas unexpectedly and without permission. So I'm going to use a very sharpened pencil and I'm going to go over. I'm going to mostly just do my outer lines. I gave you guys some of the reflection lines so that if that was really challenging to you, but this painting was important to do, you could have them and sort of work block those in easier. But I'm going to just... do the outer edges and uh, put those in myself. Now, uh, so I'm just pressing medium firmly. Tiffany was saying, uh, you know, do you recommend using the serial paper on white backgrounds? She tried it and got it super smudgy. Hmm. So if you have a really heavy hand, right, it can mm. give you grief. It does clean up with a little water and a wet brush. Um, and you can also, it comes in different colors. So you can pick a color like yellow is so light that it barely impacts the white. You know, whereas the blue and the red are pretty, pretty dark. Which is super great on, the serial paper is really great for when you've painted the canvas already and it's got this sort of plastic coating on there because, you know, acrylic paint is plastic. A lot of transfer papers don't like that coating and won't transfer on it. Sort of an interesting problem that yeah. one has with transferring on acrylic. I'll bring this off the back. Nice black of the cloak. I really am going to like piecing in all of these mm. highlights and shadows. It's, it's fun for me. But again, I'm going to be just using my contour lines. That's the external lines of the overall shape. Just the few anchoring bits of information that I need to make sure that this drawing is close to the original reference picture. And again, you can go to the website and get that reference picture and print it out. Yeah. So if you if you if you look at the link in the description below, there's a a uh, uh, there's a link to our website, and on that you can find a downloadable for all of the traceables and the reference image. And uh, as soon as we're done with the show, we'll we'll post up our pictures, the final pictures. But uh, it's a great resource for you to be able to go and find all of the uh, the information about any particular project that we've put up. There's a there's a page for each one. So I feel like I probably got everything. So I'm gonna I'm gonna, gonna remove check it. and see. Oh, yep, I got it. Got it all. I got it all. And I got red, everything I need. The red turn comes out pretty nice. Yeah, it works pretty well for what it is. And so now I have her, you know, on the canvas. You know, we're going to put something glowing here because I like that glow effect. And we have a lot to do with the red. Now, for you guys that really, I'm going to be doing her face very loose and in shadow. So she could be anyone. But I know sometimes it's hard to know what to do with something if you can't see it. So I created this. This is the new infographic where I zoomed in the face, zoomed in the cool red cloak and the warm red cloak. So you could see the color differences. Right. And you could see the values of her skin and her features. And that's really going to help you. Because it's tough to paint what you can't see. Which is why I'll be wearing glasses a lot. <laughs> and, <laughs> and part of that is training your eye to see things. Mm -hmm. Right. Part of that is training your eyes to see. I'm still training my eyes to see things. I'm still going there. So, I've got my Lizrin, uh -huh. and what I'll say is on this project, you're going to need a crimson. See how this is a very bluish red? Yes. You're going to need it. I like a Lizrin crimson, and I'm going to use a cad red medium and a cad red light. 
to pick up my highlights on this cloak because I want this thing to be so red it glows. Mm -hmm. You could use peril red. You could use there's naphthol. There's uh you can uh, use naphthol, naphthol crimson, naphthol medium. There are choices. So I've got this kind of red light, and that's going to be in these warm highlights down here. Now, one thing I will say is there's two ways you lighten red if you don't want it to be pink. One is yellow, and I'm using the Indian yellow because it will keep it from going cyclically bright orange. If you cannot get that, you can try yellow ochre. It'll just be creamier. It'll be a slightly denser finish than what I'm getting. Now I'm going to put out a little more. I'm going to put out some dogs in. I'm going to use dogs in purple and Prussian blue to darken my cloak um, and try to avoid using black because again I I want it to be super luminous on the canvas. So I'm putting a little of that out. Now in the description I mentioned zinc white or mixing white. This is going to be important because, and I'm going to show you just real quick, a demo of why this matters. Okay. So if I have titanium white, right, this one right here, and I mix it to red, I get pink. It's distinctly pink. Can and there's no pink on that cloak. Can you touch that forward just a bit? Yeah. It, you, it, it, oh, yeah. Super pink. All right. Okay. So super pink. But if I use... Red and I come to zinc white. Do you want me to zoom that out a little bit for you? Uh, what do I get? The camera so that you can pull it back towards you a little bit. Oh, no, it's okay. Okay. So see that there? Yeah. I can, with a lot of zinc white, before I even have, and it's still less pink than the titanium. So it doesn't tint or tone as quickly, like any amount of this over here, and it just starts to pink it. So that's why I bother. Okay. It's the whole point I bother. Why is that there? For that reason. So I'm going to take my number four and I'm going to block in my um, cloak like the first color, which I'm going to mostly do um, my darkest red, my darkest values. Okay. You know, so I'm going to get that in. So it's the <coughs> beginnings of it are, are worked out. Now here's an interesting thing. For this, I'm going to take a little of my cad red medium and my crimson and this is the first kind of layer of this cloak I'm going to come back and, and get my wrinkles in and all of that in a minute with my deep values and my highlight values but this needs to be a depth of red in my opinion. So this is how I would do that. So that I'm not building on the blue, I'm building on the red. So the crimson and the cad red medium together. Sometimes um, when you're working with reds and you've got a cool red and a warm red, it's easy to forget that you can mix them together to create half, half values and half tones. But already it's it's super red, isn't it? It is. Sorry about that. To the folks out there. I What? I was I was reading a comment and spaced I left them on the palette for a second. <laughs> 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 Sorry. You what? I you know, <laughs> there's a lot of screens back here is what I'll say. And I and I was I was reading the comments and chuckling and I noticed that I had left them looking at the palette cam for a you know for a couple seconds while I was reading the comments so like minutes or seconds? no no just seconds <laughs> okay so now I can leave a little space like I know I've got a very significant shadow here so I can leave a little bit of blue showing so I don't lose that All right because I'm gonna come back with such a dark value and anywhere that I've got that and I'm trying to say hey there's a shadow here or the cloaks touching I can do that to not lose, you know, my rendering. Now, I didn't come right here and just leave a little, a little space. Because I'm putting such a deep shadow in it. 
there were a couple people that were asking uh, if you could substitute uh, unbleached titanium for zinc white there. Nope. No. Unbleached oh, yeah. titanium is an off white, but it's incredibly pigmented and it'll just make a warm pink. Ah. Um, and, and this is the thing about red. It's what makes red paintings harder sometimes than other paintings. Like a lot of times people are like, oh, I'm going to paint that tree, but I'm going to paint it in red. And then they follow all the instructions, which were maybe with a blue. Well, blue lightens well with a white. It doesn't mm -hmm. become another color. It just becomes lighter blue. But red intrinsically kind of becomes another color. It becomes pink. Yeah. Right? And so, you know, they're like, man, I would have liked this idea, but the tree was pink. And I'm like, ah, but you should have lightened with yellow. It's just one of those things. So one of the reasons I'm super excited to be going into this very red painting is that it's so hard sometimes. Now I'm kind of paying attention to my um, cloak direction, even on this underpainting part where I'm brushing my strokes. If you can see, making sure that they are in the direction of what will be the fabric folds. And this is going to be so pretty. I'm just telling you right now, I'm excited. So, um, somebody said that they were using something called liquid white. Hmm. I don't know. That might be an option. I haven't used it. I'm going to actually check that out. Um, but, you know, I, I actually did check and some of the student lines do carry mixing white or zinc white. So, you can find it economically and it's worth having in your, in your world. I got, I got a, a mosquito. I, yeah, it's it's. I mean, I, I just saw him. He's gonna eat me. I, I left the back door open, so I'm. He, you got. I'm gonna get bit. More <laughs> doors. That's what we need in the studio. Is more doors. So I'm just stroking this back. Yeah, I've been wanting to paint this cloak for forever. Yeah, a lot of people are saying they're really excited to see it. There we go. So I'm curving that back. You can see I'm just talking about these folds. By doing this work of making sure my brush stroke directionality kind of works with the cloak, it saves me so much trouble trying to correct that texture mm. later. Just a little bit of foreplaning right here is so my friend. So my friend. And the minute she goes in, I think we can start just believing in her. It just kind of does this big sweep down here, and I just want to make sure I have it. And you can see that this coat definitely, definitely takes back my green. Now, if you're painting student paints like Liquitex Basics, Artist Loft, Craft Paints, mm -hmm. you may find it's really hard to paint a color over a dark color. Yeah. Um, and the hack to that, the trick to that, is to paint your figure white. Huh. And now, some people will trace on early and then try to do this directional brush stroke and not take out the white figure. I find that too challenging, right? Because the brush stroke needs to be long. So that's why I paint the figure on top of the background. Um, that's just my preference. It's not the only way art is done by sure. any means. Um, but if... So for me, my best advice would be to get this traced on, paint that white, and then do the red. If you're doing a student paint. Nobody asked that, but I just... Hmm. Felt no, like no, no, no. There's... <laughs> somebody might want to know. <laughs> there's been a lot of good questions in here that, that are real similar to that. You know, and so I, that's, that's great. Now, one of the other things it was asking about paints is, are you going to have any trouble if you're uh, mixing brands? No. Now, what if you're mm -hmm. mixing qualities? Nope, still. If, you if just like, improve the quality of the one paint. <laughs> right, but so, but like you're uh, so you, you know, if you mix if you used uh, you know, a you know, a student uh, you know a student you know, a bunch of student paints, but added your your a good white, you wouldn't be a problem, huh? That's r no, it wouldn't at all. It would not at all, and most artists in their studio 
will have something like that going on, right? They will have some version of brand and quality mixing happening. Because believe it or not, your favorite product on the planet in a particular color or style could be in maybe a more economical brand. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, you don't like something that that brand makes. And so you get um, a different one. My mom and I were talking about uh, Cad Red today. And she was saying how much she likes the Matisse Cad Red so much more. Mm -hmm. But whatever that formulation is, is more likely to um, people have more reactions to it. Because I, th- I think they're just using like super cat or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, I guess it's good to note that, you know, as with all things in art, how you use your tool is as important as what tool you use. I think so. You now, know. coming down in this area, I'm going to actually um, do this. I'm going to go more into the CAD medium mm-hmm. for this section because this is where it gets warmer. <laughs> from the light that we're going to put in. Oh, yeah, that cat really does just pop out, doesn't it? Yeah. That's why I love it. Such a good... Now, what about craft paint? Yes. Craft paint's okay to mix, too? Yeah, you can mix craft paints. The issues with craft paints is sometimes their formulations don't do color mixing Mm -hmm. in an expected way. Like, they'll be like, they'll flat out tell you, this is not for color mixing. It's for direct painting. Now, if I mix craft... But it won't, like, explode. It won't not mix. You just may have to do color charts to know the colors and results you're going to get. You couldn't predictively say, all right, well, this is thalo blue, and if I mix it with uh, cad yellow, I'm going to get this. Now, if you add a student paint or a craft paint, it's no longer archival, though, right? Mm. Because it's going to fade... And have other it, issues. It, if it's just a little craft paint, I wouldn't be worried about it, especially if you do like a good varnish and stuff. If it's like mostly craft paint, and then if there was an air, yeah, it could. You'd have to do fade tests. Interestingly enough, to know you have to take your paint outside on paper and see how fast it paints. <laughs> and it's scary when you start doing fade tests. You're like, what? I had no idea. Yeah, this is crazy. Now, I've also noticed that uh, several people have asked, you, you know, it'd be really nice if you did, uh, uh, Gloria was the last one, said, you should do some videos on brush strokes with your different mm-hmm. brushes. I'm going to. You're going you're gonna to do that yeah, here? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, um, I was, just, I was, we have a Facebook group and I pull my face group <laughs> a lot, but I was asking about people's experiences with the brushes, you know. Oh, yeah. That was, that was a good pull. So from that already, I, I know I'm going to make a follow-up video on my cloud video mm. just to make sure everybody's getting the most out of the clouds um, that they can possibly get. Oh, I like that. I'm going to sip my coffee now and celebrate that I blocked in this cloak. Already, by using those two values and by paying attention to the direction of the folds, you got some cloak. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. She's already cloaked. She's kind of got some face of invisibility going here. Mm. Babe. Yes. You want more? You want your coffee warmed up? I can do that. I do. I don't know where my hot pad went. I moved it and then. I saw it. I'll pick it up for you. Oh, it's okay. And I'll warm that up too. Really? Both? Both two things? I'll move these because I know you like to clip it there so I don't knock it off the edge. Ho, ho, ho. Here you go. We're spelling. So that's that's something to think about, you know, as we're building this up. And oh, I love the snowflakes on it. I like the actual snow. I'm gonna put like a little, a little bit of forward snowflakes, like maybe with some zinc or something, right here. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. So I I love this image. I um, I'm gonna talk randomly now because John's not reading the comments. I picked this one. Um, because the shape of the figure and the contrast of the cool color with the red and just everything about it really spoke to me. <clears throat> and I, I, you guys know I'm kind of like, I love fairy tales and I love the, oh, thank you, the red riding hood. You know, because sometimes you just got to go into the woods for family. You just, you face the danger for people that you love, right? And I just love that about, I hope I keep not losing that. I love that about the story. Aimless rambling done. All right. 
I'm going to miss my paint because acrylic paint dries. Does it? <coughs> so much. <laughs> I will put out Oop, wrong button. There a little... Yellow ochre and a little burnt umber. <coughs> Just a small amount. <laughs> Shelly's like, I want to do a series of paintings of invisible people now. <laughs> it's cool, isn't it? <laughs> You're just like, I had no idea this would be this awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to go inside my cloak real fast. With um, I'm going to take my Prussian blue and mix it with my um, alizarin. And I'm going to go right to her face with this dark value. And I'm going to pull this along here. Now, did you say that was that was that was cr that was naphthol or crimson? Crimson. crimson. Uh, by the way, um, check the pigment numbers on those because they're essentially a very similar color. It's just different companies name their stuff different stuff. So if you had so if you if you had naphthol red instead of crimson. Yeah, if you had naphthol red medium and then you had naphthol crimson, you you wouldn't be. I think the I'd have to check the pigment numbers, but they're really close. So they would work. So they're in exchange. Like if that was what was in my paint bucket, I would grab that. You okay? I would. I would not stress. And and you're and Danielle is asking, are you misting your paint so they stay wet? I am. I am misting my paint so they don't dry out on me because it gets very dry in the studio. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead while I've got it and just come along here. And Add some shadow. Yeah, I mean it's already on my brush, right? It's already on my brush, so I might as well take advantage of it while I got it mixed up. Just happily going along with my little number four and painting along. Use a brush that lets you um, have control in the spaces you need to have control of. Would be my my big big advice. And I'm gonna have to get my glasses on and determine. So I thought about this and did I want to be spending a lot of did I think it was valuable to the piece to be spending a lot of time trying to create um, a bunch of structure in here or did I want her to f be a little more in shadow and a little more anyone and I realized I wanted her to be a little more anyone so I'm going to make a very cool uh, light skin tone and then blue it a lot and kind of put a lot in shadow but it's going to be interesting mm. so however however go you right. have this oh, let me get that out if you'd like it and that was the that was the you got that on the website there. That's on the website. It's a PDF that you can download. Both of them, and the traceable. Hmm. So I'm gonna mix up some. Where's my little diamond? All right. So I'm gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna say my my alizarin over here, right, and a little of my yellow ochre. Now, is that, that's just plain water you're misting? Just uh, plain water in a micro mister. I have two kinds. I have this kind that was made for me by a community member. I have, and then I have this from uh, the art supply store. Because hmm. you should always go to the art supply store. <laughs> if you have one, you should go. I'm adding a little burnt umber. And I'm using the palette knife so that I can get a nice uniform mixture to this. I'm going to wipe it off because I need to be super technical. I'm going to take a smidge. See that tiny amount of pigment? Hmm. And I'm going to work it into my white that I just happen to have here anyways. Why not, right? <laughs> Creative Ashley would like to know if you've ever painted miniatures. Yes. <laughs> 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 if only I knew about golden paints then. I was using my fluids. Everyone's like, how come it's so good? Yeah, I, I used my golden paint fluid paints for my miniatures. I had no idea. I was like using miniature paints. Yep. Everybody thought they knew better. <laughs> I was like, you don't even know, man. You don't even know. I'm going to put out a little more white. Again, her skin is so fair.
Now, if you don't have a palette knife, do you have to mix with a palette knife? Um, you could do this with a brush. It's just a little more work. Hmm. Okay, bring this over here. I just want a really light value. If you really wanted that, you know palette knife experience but didn't have a palette knife you could probably use a credit card well for an edge but they don't make a good mixer oh really mm -mm. Ah, I get a that. smidge huh. of my Prussian and it's going to take it just to this blue tone just a hint of it and then I can yeah you're kind of scrape scrape squish scrape scrape squish look at that it's like yeah. frosting um I've seen people use like plastic spoons and stuff when they've been really stuck or you know, just any tool that will let them do scrape, scrape, squish. <laughs> that's that's the key. That's your scrape, key scrape, technique. Squish. So let's block in what we have going on in her face. <clears throat> so I want to cast this shadow here pretty strongly through here. I'm going to have a shadow under her eye. And I'll do a little bit of this. And I just want to get a highlight on her nose and the shading around her face. And then down her front. Um... Since I'm not entirely a thousand percent sure how I'm going to like this when I get it here, one thing that I can do is work on her chest first. Oh. Right? And let's put out some glazing medium so we can make little micro decisions and not pay for them. Let's unclog our glazing medium. So this is Golden's Acrylic Glazing Liquid. I happen to have satin right now because I just accidentally ordered satin. Gloss is my favorite just because I like a gloss finish. Um, they all work equally well. There we go. And it slows down the drying time on my paint and allows me to glaze. Both things that one needs. So I wouldn't say this would be a good skin tone in most projects. Right? I wouldn't be like, oh, I've got this skin formula now because it's really cast with blue. Mm-hmm. But for this project, it's the right skin tone. I'm just coming in here and very carefully painting this first evaluation in. I might even come back a little bit here. Then once I have that worked out, I'm going to put a little blue on my brush maybe tone it with a little umber like you do and start to to come in and cast this blue value across her chest Diane says that she really appreciates all the PDFs you're putting up on the site as reference. That really help. That's really helpful, especially that they're free. That's huge. Oh, you're very welcome. She was like, yeah, she specifically said she really appreciates the free PDFs, <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't understand until I until she, until the second sentence where it was like the, the free was the important part. So I was like, no problem. We just want you guys to be able to paint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No shade to anybody who who you know um, charges for PDFs though. No, it's fine. Because sometimes that's that's how that's their patronage. That's, that's how you support how you do them, it. and that is totally okay. All right, so I am pulling this shadow, this bluer shadow, forward. And you can see I'm just building up this layer. Mm -hmm. So acrylic paint can be very hard to get soft edges on. Mm -hmm. And when we're trying to get that, we can blend. We can glaze and we can dry brush. And right now we're kind of, see this little wiggling I'm doing with this brush? It's sort of a dry brushing. A little more, taking my base skin tone mix mixture to the bluer value. And I'm going to just make sure that we're nicely blended. She had a bit of a highlight here on her bosom. I'm just painting what I see. What I can see. Yeah. Now I'll take a little of my alizarin crimson and my Prussian blue over here. That's going to be my deep shadow. So I just want that close by. Because that's useful when you need it. 
So I'm just shading this. We're going to give her some black hair in a second. A little bit. Now, right here at her forehead, she's got kind of a deep shadow. And I'm going to take this color. And start to come around the side of her face as carefully as I can. My canvas is very rough. So what I would say is if you want to do highly detailed faces that are small, switch to portrait canvas. And um, maybe even more fluid paints, but definitely portrait canvas. Because the smooth finish of it will allow you to do tiny little adjustments to your value and your shading. So you could be like the most amazing portrait painter but because you, I'm coming under the nose mark here with this. Um, but because you uh, have a rough canvas, you might not ever know it. Coming right up of here over the top into the bangs. I'm going to be going over. Now back into my deeper color that I haven't rinsed. You know, it might come right under the eyeball with just this shadow. Bring the shadow down. And then I'm going to come over a space in the nose and put most of this face in this cool blue shadow. Bit here under the nose. I'm going to wipe off and I'm going to get my base kind of bluish skin tone that I have. I might add some glazing medium to it to have a nice flow. And I'm going to come to the nose. And the tip of the nose is a bit of almost like a triangle cone shape. It's sort of interesting. I'm going to come along the ridge, down gently on this side of the nostril. Put a little highlight right here. <coughs> and under her eye, at her cheek. Hmm. Blending that out. Now, if we don't... It just softly brush one right there. If hmm. el Elbow is asking, if she doesn't have slow dry, should she just be misting her canvas? I mean, her, uh, not canvas, her palette. Yeah, just periodically, uh, you don't want to over soak it, but you can go ahead and mist it. That'll always work. Mm. Now I've got to fiddle out the, the valuation changes, which is always a challenge. Using the tip of my brush, just trying to make sure that objects are the, that tip back another nostril here. The shape that I want. That's what we're doing. And come up under the eye. Shape that we want. So we're starting to get there. You can kind of see the face. Let's see. Let's back up. Start to take shape mm -hmm. in shadow. Things that we put in shadow, we can be a little less, um, I don't want to say responsible to, but it is almost like responsible to it. I'm going to take just the um, crimson in my glaze. I'm going to make sure that this cheek you there? right here has this bit of a glaze. And even here. I'm going to get the smallest amount of crimson. I might tone it with a little of my Prussian glaze. <laughs> <laughs> right. And just... Very carefully. I'm 
I'm going to very just imply the mouth, right? This is going to be my trick. I'm going to just imply the mouth. I'm going to take a school, cooler skin tone and work it on the nose. I need to adjust the nose a little bit longer. Making small adjustments will keep me from getting the place to the place where I can't, where I don't like it, right? If I make big adjustments, it might be very hard. But by making small adjustments at a time, I'm going to be able to get her where I want her. Um... Now, we are going to be bringing the hair down here, but I'm just trying to make sure. I'm going to take the shadow color around her chin even a little bit. And then an even darker value under the nose and up the side. See? It's amazing how just a few tabs of color makes a huge, huge, huge difference. To what we're looking at. If you got anything too bright, you can take your blue into your skin tone, get a lot of glaze. See how it just kind of pulls it out? And glaze some of that to tone back. Isn't that interesting how you can do that? Mm hmm. And then she can be even more in shadow. Now I'm going to get into my detail brushes and I'll have to pull out for me. I have to, oh, I have some blackout, so I'm good. So I'm going to just do a couple little accent bits. First, I'm going to tip my small detail. This is a number one detail. And I'm going to make a couple strong impressions. I'm going to make a darker shadow at the eye and I'm going to come along my lash line. I'll have to knock this back with a little bit of paint, but I need to be able to see it, so I'm just starting out. Just applying a little lash and being super careful. If you're not confident in lashes, you can skip that. I'm going to bring the uh, eyebrow, interestingly, is from the corner of the eye to the apex corner, outer corner. So that's how I know where to lay my eyebrow down. I'm going to just make sure that I've got a nice lip shadow. A little under nostril shadow. And a lot of this is going to be in super darkness. So I should be pretty good there. Just getting a nice dark value with my tiny brush where, you know, so I can work things. So I'm happy. Bring some of that underneath the lids. I'm just making sure that there's a little shadow under the lid. Here's a funny trick. I'm going to take the crimson. And I'm not going to tone it back. I'm just going to get the smallest amount on my brush. And on the outer part of the lip, I'm going to add it. And a little crimson right here. But not across the whole lip. Just to the outer edge here. Where the light would be catching her. Right? I wouldn't want it across the whole... Oh, wrong button. <laughs> the whole thing. I'm going to get, um, I'm tempted in this space to keep with my small brush. I'm going to get a little of my Prussian and black together again, like you do. 
I don't want to, I don't like to take water from my cup to my small brush. So sometimes I like to mist where I'm going to be needing the water and just loading up from there. And just to be sure, added a little of the, the blue. We're going to take the hair across her face. Nikki was asking, she wants to know when I'm going to bring the bubble machine back. Oh, hopefully soon. I I'm, miss my bubble machine. I'm, I'm actually, you know what? I'm probably not that far from having the bubble machine back. Today was the first day that I got some of the other pieces kind of back and working again. Mm-hmm. Um, we just got to get bubble stuff, which is hard to do in winter. <laughs> yeah. You know, bubble supplies, good bubble supplies, because see, we've got a, I'll digress. We have a industrial DJ bubble blowing machine and homemade bubbles. They, they pop before they leave the machine because the wind is so strong. So we have to have real bubble machine, bubble stuff. And that's a problem. So I've kind of got that worked out. I'm going to look at it for a second and then I can make adjustments once I see what I've got. All right. Adjust so we're starting to get a face in here. We are. And I'm knocking my oh. heater off. I'll get it. Oh, it's a spot on my monitor. I was like, what did I paint there? It's a spot on my monitor. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what I'm looking at here. <laughs> mm. Oh, thank you. Ish. All right. Clipped ish. So I'm just going to keep working this till I'm a little bit happier. I'm going to take a little of my base skin tone. I'm going to grab even a little of my crimson. But I'm going to make sure it's super light. Get my glaze. I'm going to make sure I'm going to give a highlight to the ball of my nose. Maybe one across the lid up here. So small brush can sometimes be, you know, the difference. You can always use zinc too. Zinc's an incredibly useful tool to what you're getting on your, that's too bright. So I'm now, gonna just first blend this in and then I'll knock it back. You're gonna go over the velvetness of how you got the, you know, how you're gonna do the cape and all that, yeah? Oh yeah, completely. Okay, so you're gonna talk about that in a little bit once you're done with the. Once we're done with the face. Okay, yeah, Julie was like really just excited about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure that everything I have here, I'm feeling, you know, good about. So I'm just brushing a little highlight here. Just where the light has, you know, gotten on her and. Mm. Just a little cad. They're sharing bubble recipes with me. That could be good. That could be good. I, I, got, I think glycerin is my magic. Is glycerin going to be your magic source? I need some of that stuff. And we all need some glycerin. So I've got my little blue and my, my black. I'm going to make sure I've got a good shadow right here coming down. And then I'm going to also make sure I've got a good shadow right here. Because this will help me when I put in my hair. Which I'm going to take my blue into my black. And I'm going to get a little zinc, interestingly enough, so we can just start to see the faintest highlight of it. In her cloak. A little more black. Let's just bring some hair down here. All right, breaking the inside of the cloak. Got our nice bangs happening here. That's lovely, right? Just a little bit of hair.
just little tendrils. I have a whole thing, a whole bunch of videos on how to paint different hair colors if you need to customize the hair color here. Now come over to your Prussian blue or your phthalo, whatever your blue mixture is, and you're going to get it right into the zinc. You're going to come right here very delicately. Even a little more blue than what I have. And you're going to make some highlights where the light has caught her hair just a smidge, like in her bangs and down the front. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Not too much. You just want a little bit. So that you're, when you look in there, you're like, oh, it's a little bit of hair. Darken the under her bangs. I'm going to darken a little bit with the glaze. So I'm going to put a little more of a blue shadow under here with the glaze. It's always good to back up from your piece. So I'm going to come here and see with just blue. Just also darken this over here. <laughs> so there's been a ongoing chat in here about the different kinds of Christmas desserts that there are, mm -hmm. ranging from brownies to buckeye balls and turtles and everything in between. And everyone was commenting on how uh, she looks like she's freezing. And uh, I, I chuckled because Mama said that, uh, no, she's just longing for her brownies. <laughs> and so <laughs> you guys really should How join us. How I feel us. without brownies. <laughs> you guys really should join us in chat. It's, it's a heck of a lot of fun in here. So. <laughs> so I pulled this blue because I just want there to just be this strong. But you can see I just did it with a glaze. Look at that. Mm. Ah, she's perfect now. I'm loving her. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy. Isn't she just in her cloak, cold and reflective? Cold and reflective. Cold and reflective. Mm-hmm. Nothing like a little cold and reflective moment in life, right? Mm -hmm. I get, f I get fiddly. That's okay. Making sure that the lip is. Tipped a bit. I have, there's lots of uh, there. The, there we go. All right. I, I like all the thought bubbles that they're putting in chat right now. They're putting what? Thought bubbles. They're, they're telling uh, they're, what, what she could be thinking. All the different things that she could be thinking. And it's, it's so there. It's very, it's very funny. You'll have to, you'll, as a matter All of fact, right. you guys should put those in the comments below so Cinnamon can so read them out. I'm pretty happy with that. Hopefully you're pretty happy with yours. It's yes. a bit to come in and shade it and work it out. We've had, we've had over 500 people here this entire time, closer to 550 the entire time, and they're really enjoying the Cinnamon. This is, the, we're having a great time in chat, chatting and watching you paint and... Um, so thank you for doing this today for us. We really all appreciate it. All right, I feel like. Katie's like, what is that shiny black puddle on her palette? Oh, that's paint. I thinned my black. I over thinned it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's black paint. That I thinned, thinned it. So the next thing I want to put in is all my shadows in my cloak. And I'm going to be making those with either, I'm going to put a little more alizarin, either my Prussian blue or my diox as I'm going through. I'll show you when and where and how we switch them. Hmm. And I'm going to be really working my zinc white. I'm misting with water. I'm getting my Prussian blue over to my alizarin. Oh, yes. We're ready. And we're going to start talking about, like, say, right down the center of this hood, right? a good place to start. There's a line. And I'm going to come here 
and find every wrinkle. So like just wiggling my hand and I'm pulling down a little bit of a wrinkle. Painting is sometimes like filling out puzzle pieces. Right, and come put the shadow right here. Come back up, build a little more of what I'm seeing. You're just building what you're seeing. Build the shapes. Don't take on all of the cloak. Right now, just take on this part right here. That's the strategy for painting um, stuff that's complicated is, is break it down into smaller bits. Don't take on, I'm going to come around here and shade this side, the whole thing. Now, Jackie was so curious why wrinkle. you changed the framing of the picture. Oh, they're not the same aspect ratio. And so I decide where I want to put things for my composition. Uh, what do you mean by aspect ratio? So the size of the reference is not an equivalent 9 by 12. It's not equivalent to a 9 by 12. Oh, it's taller and thinner. Mm -hmm. So then I just move things around and I'll have like a little glow thing here and it will work out. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. All right. So I'm just shading the edge here. Let's bring some uh, shadow folds up into this part of the hood that you can see. Just, you know, you're not going to see everything necessarily at first. So just paint what you can see. If you get most of it, believe you me, it will come together. Earlier, we made a point of really paying attention in our brush stroke when we were laying in the cloak too, to the directionality of our folds. And this is gonna help us so much. Mm. All right, here we go. So now if you don't have the cat's tongue, what would you suggest here? A filbert, a round, or small bright that you have control of. Okay. Bring this down. So again, it's like you're not going to see it all, but what you see, try to paint as much of what you see as you can. Now, Angela would just like to, to say... Cinnamon has changed my way of thinking from I think I can, I think I can, I think I can to I know I can, I know I can, I know I can. Oh my gosh, Angela, thank you. That means a lot. Thank you. So I'm going to make sure I have this nice blue. And I'll come back later with like a blue highlight for inside this fold. Because believe it or not, the interior of her cloak is lined with blue as if that isn't beautiful enough. Mm -hmm. The red was pretty, but then you find out the cloak is lined with blue, and then you're like, wow. Making these little shadow shapes. As many as you can get a record of. You know, some of you might get more shadow shapes recorded than me. You know, this may be your jam where you're like, man, you know. I've, I've, if you're talking just puzzle piecing stuff together, it's my space. So I'm just very lightly touching the canvas and I'm wiggling back and forth. And that lets even some of what's underneath show through. And you're just constantly trying to be like, I think I see this part. And you build it in as much as you can. And you can see even just dry brushing. It helps. Look, so already her cloak up here has started to get some shape going. And it feels a little more like a cloak. We're just going to piece through. 
This, to me, is the kind of painting that lowers my blood pressure. <laughs> so, Jackie would like to know, does anyone else hold their breath when Cinnamon is doing a close-up details? <laughs> do you hold your breath, Cinnamon? A little bit. I, I wonder if I do, too. I have to think about that. That's funny. Well, because it can go really weird. That's right? right. It yeah. can go pear-shaped. I guess, well, I guess we could, everyone is like, yeah, I guess we do. You know? It can be weird, and then you're like, oh, God, it's live, and it's weird. It's going to be out forever. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? So I'm going to come right here and just brush up a very soft shadow. Mm, Patricia has a leopard cloak lined in red. That, that could be another way of going here. Oh my gosh, that would be a thing to paint. Well, if you're <laughs> going to do leopard... I have a friend, uh, Zoe uh, Hung, mm -hmm. and um, she's a fashion illustration channel, and she has a how to do uh, patterns on any folds. Yeah, like some crazy thing. It's like she has she has magical fabric sense. Yeah, I mean, like the way that some people can, you know, like they have their their horse whispers or you know their computer tamers. She can like speak to fabric and make it do things that it doesn't know it can do. <laughs> She knows. She knows. <laughs> she knows. So I'm just, you can just see I'm just building it up slowly. And again, your traceable has a lot of these in for you. So that Don't hold you're your not breath. completely stuck out. But remember, like, I, you know, you're stuck with what I could see <laughs> when I drew it. <laughs> Have to remember not to hold your breath and breathe. Breathe. Just breathe through it. Breathe through it. Make some nice little wrinkles that are coming around the shoulder here. Nice little shadow that's happening right here. So at this point, the cloak is getting very dark because we're getting in all the deep values when we come back and start working our 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 brighter values it's really quite a thing mm -hmm. i'm just see this little brush stroke where i'm just touching this is some of how i get the velvet texture like later when we go through with the zinc and the highlights mm -hmm. this is this is my trick i'm not saying i'm the best in the universe at it but i do okay so denise points out this could be an ikea rug we don't know. <laughs> oh, Jon Snow. <laughs> so many feelings on that. <laughs> but I did nail the Ikea rug. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to start. This this whole bit here is isn't. This is so involved. <laughs> That's when I'm like, you know, take it off in bits. Like, I'm going to take in only the dark values at first. Because I would be overwhelmed if I tried to take in everything. It would be too much. As it is, I'm almost overwhelmed, and I've done this before. Mm. You just piece it out. Come down another incremental bit. Everything on the backside is in a bit of a shadow, right? Because it's against the uh, this dark light. So it's okay to put this in a nice deep value where it's almost blending into the sky behind it. Keep the shapes of the wrinkles. Just know that they start out in these deep values, right? right? Now, are you mostly dry brushing these values in? Um, so not a rough dry brush, not an extremely dry brush, but it is a bit of a dry brush because at this point the cloak isn't wet anymore. So I couldn't blend to this red paint. And I can glaze over it or I can dry brush over it. Those are the things that I can do at this stage. Mm -hmm. 
Kind of just very softly. The other thing about this paint is the alizarin crimson and the Prussian tend to be both a little transparent. So there is a, there's a wonderful element of that I'm glazing to that. Pulling this out. It's helpful. Dealing with the shadows on this wrinkly side. <laughs> Come down, there's another. We'll just say there's another one here. All you can do is just come in and capture as much as you can. Now you can start getting into the purple where you've got warmer shadows if you need to. I think I'm going to keep with my cool though and not warm it up till I'm like overtly over here. Hmm. I might do a little warming up here but I'm going to keep it all into the cool because I can handle that right now. And there's a lot going on in her wrinkly cape. In there. Yeah. How are we doing? Just pull this. There's this nice sense of value. Nice one over here. So if you get overwhelmed in an area, come down into a space that's simpler and let your mind have a rest. Right? Yeah. It can even help to turn your object to the side to position it a different direction. So you're seeing it from a different perspective. There we go. So, um, uh, Reem was asking, why don't you use a very small detail brush? Does it affect the color gradient? Um, so a detail brush is, can only make small uh, micro strokes, which is really nice in this kind of space. But here I want to have a softer stroke. So I like the cat's tongue. I might, if I didn't have the cat's tongue, I'd probably have a number two bristle synthetic mix or something like that just to help me feel like I had control over that space. Gotcha. But it's not right or wrong. It's what you're comfortable with. The tool you use is is the your best tool. And, and which one is that you're using? I'm using the number four cat's tongue. The number four cat's tongue. Okay. Um, some of the places that sell these, uh, we'll call them filberts because they don't know I call it a cat's tongue. <laughs> I don't have a filbert in this line. So... <laughs> But I guarantee you by next year, <laughs> they'll be mm -hmm. everywhere. Not necessarily this one, just cat's tongue brushes. See, I'm just pulling this in. I'm using this to help me see my, see what I've got going on here. Giving myself a better position so I'm not straining my body. I am just going back and forth real lightly with my brush to make sure that I've got this shadow kind of talked about. Hmm. So you're asking if I can... You can anything. What do well, you need? Uh, uh, I was going to say, it's, it'd be kind of hard for me to turn the uh, reference photo here. No, but guess what? I have this reference photo for free on the website. You guys can print it out and then do old school turning. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just well, it is. That's what it's for. So 
I'm just trying to mark what I feel like I'm seeing in my space. See? Finding the pieces. Got overwhelmed, changed perspective. That's a strategy. Everything in painting is a painting strategy. So in general, you know, you're like, what can I do to give myself just a soft dry brush? See, I'm like letting a lot of it show through underneath. I'll get that one. It has a nice strong dark one starts to come in and then get some more paint. I dip my brush in just the tip of the water, get my mix again. There we go. I love getting these, these little fiddly bits of of wrinkles and this one here and then so I'm looking like how I break this down is I'm like I can see this red highlight and then I just look at the shape of this shadow Hold on. maybe the shape of this shadow and that's what I'm trying to keep my mind quiet on and so I can see what I'm seeing in the noise of the piece. This is really what artists do when they're trying to break down stuff is they're like trying to break down the noise of the piece and they create mental strategies, probably really based on how their brain is wired, on how they can accomplish that. And my mental strategies might work best for me and not be ideal or even perfect for you because I have ADD. So that impacts my mental strategy. How I resource my data, how I resource what I'm going to take in and, and look at and see versus, you know, what I can't necessarily handle. I'll be doing this again in a minute with some highlights. <laughs> yeah. And that's what you do. I'm going okay, to turn it up because I feel like, or maybe I'm going to go upside down. <laughs> And that's what you can do. You can go upside down. So you can see something that maybe you couldn't see before. But now you can see. very well and so just take a different perspective I mean this works in painting and life sometimes too all right so I'm gonna just continue a little of this cool shadow to right about there I'm just brushing it back pulling some in There's a stark one right here. Because I'm going to have to switch over into my CAD red medium and my um, docks in a second. So there that is. And then just, see that right there? I cut that fold. I trace this line to right here. It comes out. I see it. Right. And that may mean that you end up seeing something else here and have like what I'm going to have to do is now I see my skirt line differently. I have to go back to my original uh, mix color, which was my uh, Lizarin and K2 
AutoCAD and make sure that I have the line I'm seeing here. So these are other things that happen to you while you're painting along the way. You, if you take a different look, a different gander at what you have, you may go, oh, I, I didn't see that the one direction, but I really see that here. You know, so these are things that impact your experience with the painting and with what you're doing. Curving my brush stroke. All right. I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah. Got a nice face on her. Cloak is starting to look really good. I mean, red is here. So I'm going to take, I've got my cad red medium and my docks purple. This is by nature, it's still a shadow, but it has a very different temperament than the other red that I was mixing. Yeah. So by using it here, it will feel like there's more light being reflected on these bits. Now, uh, could Jackie was wondering, could you scale this larger? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I, I would just... use a grid for this one, mm. but yes. Look up how to enlarge by gridding. That's how I would do it. Unless you have a projector and then just project. <laughs> just project. Just project. If you have a projector, have a blast. Just project. Coming down here. Just making sure that these shadows are right there. nice fold here. It's kind of a maybe for that little bit here I'm gonna just there we go. Working the spaces. Now, when you're working your highlights, if mm -hmm. if you don't, if your white isn't white enough, is there anything you can do? The white, yeah, isn't white enough. Yeah. So, uh, oh, speaking of highlights, what uh, what should one do if the white they have is not white enough? Like if your whites, you're just not covering. Well, you're too strat. You could you could do a strategy of several coats. Mm hmm Right. Ooh, I know she's getting darker and darker into the woods. We gotta pop that broke really intense lighting on her um you can do a couple coats or, or you can find a white that works better for you um sometimes when people are like what's the one paint i should upgrade i'm like upgrade the white right upgrade the white because wow it is not all created equal or at least find a white that works really really well hmm. mm. that's good advice it's good advice that's what i've got Good advice all week as my paint dries, <laughs> even though I missed it. I think I've done most of the painting with this. That's fine. <laughs> and come around into this area, which is again my purple. And start to piece this together. 
So it's subtle, like you're like, how is the Prussian blue and the alizarin different? I don't know, it just is. And when it all plays together, it will just feel subtly warmer over here. Than other places. Sometimes I get quiet because I'm like, I'm looking, I'm like, what's happening there? <laughs> I'm just, you can see I'm just very lightly, you could glaze this on, you can dry brush this on. I like this method because it helps imply the velveteen texture. Yeah. That we're trying to talk about so much. Getting some just docks. And if at any point the docks is not deep enough for the wrinkles that you're seeing, you can always go into your Prussian and just make sure that that crease, right, like this very important kind of alligator mouth crease, has a nice deep shadow. Or maybe right where her hand is grabbing. I mean, that's what makes it look like the hand is grabbing, is you've got to create the shadow where, you know, her hand is holding her cloak mm -hmm. closed. Maybe a little one there. And, and then there's just, we have this one nice one here. But there's just one more kind of off the cloak and then it comes down and gets thicker and isn't it crazy how when you put it together it starts to actually come together yeah it's just puzzle pieces and you just try to see what the puzzle pieces of the fabric folds are saying if you replicate enough of it accurately <laughs> it will look like you uh, kind of had your stuff together I'm just making sure again that this outer edge doesn't have any bright highlights because this whole painting is told by these bright highlights so you don't want to have them where you don't mean to coming down with my purple Just a little wiggle along here. Okay. Just trying to get these little... It's so crazy right here where the the yellow and all of that is starting to be on here. So we're gonna do it we're gonna do kind of a a bananas thing. We're gonna take a little of our Indian yellow. For the shadows that are really in this bright light. So they're there in their shadows. They are really, really in this bright light. You don't actually paint light, but you paint how light impacts the objects that it's hitting. So by adding a little yellow to my shadow color and warming it up, it's going to help enforce this idea that there's a light shining on this part of the cape. That's my strategy anyways. You're like, oh my gosh, she's putting yellow into the purple. Yes, I am. Hmm. Now, in the description, there uh, we may have two palette. Do you have two palette choices here? Uh, how do you mean? It says you can. It has, it has two selections of colors. 
Uh, that may have been a mistake. So I may have to go H- check How do you it. mean? Uh, it says uh, you can choose this set of colors or this set of colors. If I give you an or, it's an exchange in case you don't have the colors. Oh, okay. So either palette would work. The, the palette I'm giving you gives this result. The alternate palette is if you don't have it, how you could get something you'd be happy with. Okay. Right? That you might be ex- okay with, that you'd be happy with. So you're like, I don't have Cad Red Medium. Well, Naphthol Red might work, right? Mm-hmm. I don't have any yellow. Well, just do the yellow ochre, right? Because Cad won't work. Cad Yellow that we have won't be good in that. So that's just how we're managing those elements in the painting. Yeah. If that makes sense. So, uh, you know, you guys ask a lot of questions like, well, what if I don't have this color or I don't have this color? And so sometimes I try to make sure I get in there and give you guys an answer about that sooner rather than later. I feel like I can go into my highlights now. Hmm. So I think my first highlight that I'm going to start working, I'll take just a little of my alizarin into my cad red medium. Just a little bit. So it's still much more cad red medium. And I'm going to come here. And I'm going to start tapping some highlight color, some highlight space right here. Got like a little highlight right here in the hood. And then I'm going to come here and pop a little of this lighter value. Take it here. And I like to wiggle it around so that it keeps that kind of velveteen feeling as I'm highlighting it. Right? As I'm finding those brighter, more thought about highlights in that space. Keeping these going. Sorry, sometimes when I ask like what John means, it's because like I'm just not sure the context of the oh, question. No, no. I'm not like at all like upset and he's asking it in any way though. You know, and sometimes we don't like. Sometimes I'm having to re-ask questions here because you know, t- there, text doesn't always convey you know the I- intonation and mm-hmm. your other things that our, our normal language picks up. So sometimes we don't always understand uh, the questions either, so we have to re-ask them. So uh, yeah. No, it's so true. And our, you know, our, our chat's been flying. We've had like five, over 500 people in here, and this chat's just been just going, going, going. So. <laughs> so I've got my Lizrin and a little of my zinc, and I'm going to test. I feel like I can put a little highlight here. A couple places. With my zinc. Just tapping it along. And I'm working little areas at a time, so I'm not trying to get so overwhelmed coming back. So I'm just making these little brush strokes. The reason being is that the velvet isn't going to um, – 
have like one consistent, necessarily very specific highlight. It's going to have little areas where it catches the light. So where I can, I'm going to do that as well. Hopefully not taking out any of the work that we've done so far. Just catching the, the smidges where it is. See right here on the, the front of the hood. If I get too far into the cloak, I'm not going to be able to see all of it. How, how is everybody doing with this? Good. All right. How's it going? Looking Up, good. Coming together. Yeah. Rinse out my brush a good bit. I'm also going to just hit a couple places with some CAD Red Light because it's so powerful. And that's just the thing I can do as an artist that, you know, the photographer could not even do. So just little dashes of that magic sauce. Just at the front here because some of the light might be reflecting up on her. And so that's a nice way to talk about it a little bit. All right. Going to continue telling this red, red story. The red really pops. Yeah. Telling this red, red story. Back and forth. I've got my cad red deep on here. Now, wasn't there a red that was like crushed beetles? Yep. But, you know, there, there were some people in here, they were worried. They were like, I don't want any crushed beetles in my paint. Uh, very unlikely. You pay a lot of money for a crushed beetle now. But yeah. you get them for free in your Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you're but you you aren't gonna find it you aren't gonna find crushed beetles in your in your paint unless you're paying a lot of money for it though yeah it's, no not it doesn't just wander in there those those those, tra those those traditional methods of pigment collection are very expensive mm -hmm. so you know like you know doing the 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 using urine from buffalo and our cows and that have been, you know, all, you know not, nothing that there's not nothing necessarily wrong with those methods. It's just very expensive, right? And um, so you don't have to worry about, you know, animal uh, involvement in your paint. Generally speaking, generally speaking, but I'll tell you what I can't say for all paint companies, yeah. but the good ones will generally tell you if there is a product like that in your paint, and you can actually write. Um, Especially if you're living like a conscientious, conscientious vegan lifestyle, mm -hmm. you can write them and oh, yeah. they will tell you what products there is that um, use animals, if there yeah. were any. But a lot, of the, a lot of the paint industry is now driven uh, by, us, by, by chemicals, mm -hmm. by, by chemically derived pigments. So Thus the cadmium debate. Right. <laughs> and, you know, so, you know, bone black doesn't really, generally speaking, come from ivory or it's, bones. It's just OK, like because like no paint company is wealthy enough to go buy some actual ivory. Yeah, I've actually talked about it's like it's like even if they morally weren't against it, um, they wouldn't get it. The few companies that do have it um, source it uh, from like wildlife parks of animals that have naturally come to their end. Mm -hmm. They're actually pretty they think about these things a lot more than you might think. Yeah. 
So I'm just looking different places for where I need to make sure I've got a good highlight. Find yourself a good tube of mummy brown. Yeah. No mummy brown no more. Well, you know, they, I, w I was, uh, I don't know, they were saying that there may be an odd leg or arm around enough to make it's, some. It's but in a, there, <laughs> there may be some mummy brown in a museum, but it's just probably not going to be at your local art store. And I'm right. not saying that Michael Harding didn't somehow figure out how to get some because he's pretty committed to his world. So I'm just trying to make sure that as I'm coming forward here, I'm catching the highlights on my cloak. How's that looking? Looking good. See, it's just coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up red. And that's the trick. Can we get this to come up red? Oh, I'm loving now, it. Are you using the same brush there for highlighting and mm -hmm. doing the shadows? So, okay. Yeah, I'm just moving through, same brush stroke, same brush, just, just enjoying it. I'm working through. So then my, um, taking my zinc into my red. See, it lightens it, but still leaves it red. Doesn't make me have a pink problem. Yeah. Which I don't want a pink problem. Not that pink is a problem. She's an awesome performer. We all love her. Hmm. But I want to make sure that there's areas where the highlights are really intense. <sighs> Physically intense, this painting. Yeah. But we're almost through it. You know, you're just trying to make sure that you're catching highlights as you're going. There we go. We're getting there. We've gotten a whole big bunch of it done, haven't we? Mm-hmm. And now this isn't so mysterious on like how you would paint this or get this or have this, hopefully. I'm just trying to make sure this section is actually quite solidly red and I think it's important for the feeling of the cloak on the piece. Mm-hmm. So I'm just making sure that that's represented there. There we go. There you go. There we go. Wow. We're moving along. Wow. It's starting to look so good. I'm zooming out behind you. It's <laughs> just. That's nice. Crazy sauce, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's great. Crazy, crazy, crazy sauce. So mixing my two colors together. And there would be other red combinations you could do to get this, too, by the way. These are just the ones that I like. And so they're the ones I use. But, like, if you're like, oh, no, I want to do cad and quinacridone, might have been equally good. Right? Might have been okay to do peril red if you have the resources, if you have the money. Your trick is to have cool reds and warm reds that play well off of each other. So that, um, getting some pure CAD. And this is the CAD red medium. There's a CAD red deep. You could have done all three CADs, by the way. You could have an all CAD cape. I haven't even treated myself to the CAD deep yet. Isn't that nice right there? A 
coming down the front and catch some of these. There's a little reflection right here. And she's got a little one kind of right here. It comes up this nice fold. Just tapping one right there. I'm just piecing it out. I'm doing what I did. As I'm coming into the front, I'm just getting more and more into my CAD. Just to enjoy that. And make sure that what I have is what I want. And now I'm going to move into my warm cads and my Indian yellow. Kind of toning everything with that. So that the stuff that I'm putting right here is warmer. Now there's an interesting thing. I know that this light was photoshopped over this reference image. And I know that because of how the cloak is actually lit. Which is an interesting thing to see. And that's something to start looking for in your reference images because sometimes there's some great photoshopped images, mm -hmm. but they were photoshopped, you know, and so therefore when the cape was photographed, it was photographed in one kind of light. All right, and you might have to make some adjustments if you're gonna have that happening. Mm -hmm. So I'm just coming here with this brighter. Now that red's looking very orangey. Yeah, where the light's gonna be, it's supposed to be very orange. Okay. It's a it's a very It's another way of lightening a red without changing its its fundamental tone. Interesting. So if I'm trying to sit there and talk about a bright light source but I don't want to make it pink, that's a thing that I can do. Oh, interesting. So that that orange actually helps make the red Mhm. Mm okay. When I light up this grass and put this glow here, that'll help that be so much more believable. Otherwise, it would be like not look quite right. And I'd have to glaze it with like just the Indian yellow. Yeah, I remember I had that uh, that Mini Cooper that was uh, that was more of to that orangey red than it was mm -hmm. to the blue red, and I always thought it looked kind of orange. Yeah. I think I, yeah that uh, most people tend to like that deeper bluer red. I think so, and we're just putting the orange red where yeah. we've got the light. Yeah. No, we're no, gonna keep it the deeper bluer red everywhere else. No, I'm just sort of thinking about that no no it's a good thing to think about it's what you think about it's literally what you should be thinking about right isn't that literally what you should think about loading up with some of my alizarin just making sure my shadows are good see the great thing about alizarin is it's almost a glaze right so you can literally glaze something with it and not lose the values that you worked very hard. See how we're doing? To pull in. All right. Little of my cad red. smidge of the zinc. Let's start velvet reflecting right here. Just start putting that in, that little reflection. Tapping that in. We 
more CAD. Keep going. We're almost there. Almost there. Almost there. It really is. It now, really this is been... almost there. Of just a few more highlights to really sort of. Now you thought this was going to be about a two hoot painting, yeah? Yeah. And look at that. We're right here at about two hours. Yeah, that's just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just you know that's how it just kind of works out, huh? It it does seem to be that kind of formula. All right, got her cape in. It's looking pretty rumply and velvety. Mm hmm. It's looking really nice. Just touching up where I want to make sure I have some touch up. Happy, 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 joy, joy, happy, happy, joy. All right, so I'm happy with that shading. Now we're going to just resolve the front here in this sort of grass that we've got going on. Keep it in the snow and give her some sort of mystical light that we don't know why she's got. Mystical light. A mystical light. I'm going to put out a little more green because I'm dubious that my green is still what it's supposed to be. And I'm going to put out a little more Prussian to deepen it. If I have to, I'll get my burnt umber out, but I think it'll be good here. It's so very Prussian. Very Prussian. Other than that being so very blue, I don't know that what that would mean otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, interesting trick. If you don't have the brown, you can always come and deepen your green with a red. It's an interesting, interesting little space. And now I'm going to let the back of this be like loose and empty. And I'm not even going to start implying these textures until I'm getting up here. It's a magic light. Hmm? Your magic light. Your, you know what you're putting in over there? Yeah, my magic light. Your magic light. So I'm just darkening this with the red. And what's nice about darkening with the red Right, and now I can start to encroach on the wonderful little cape. Now I'm going to kind of make it like a fairy glow, like it's going to be like a little, not like an actual, like I'm going to draw a little teen time fairy, but it's going to be like a glow, an unexplained glow. Now, if you wanted to add a different tone or hue to the skin color, mm -hmm. could you get away with that without affecting the painting here? Yeah. Yeah, I liked it. But you could do it. So if you wanted to have a... Yeah, just make know. sure that it's shadowed, right? Because it's under her hood. So if you wanted to have like chartreuse skin or green skin... Anything you want. Or maybe some purple skin, it'd be okay. It would be okay. You could do it. all those colors out there. Yeah. Yep. And, we, and if you just, you know, we have a, a, a skin mixing yeah. um, video. If you're less traditional and you like those more human-based colors, we got some... some Tutorials on skin tones. Yes, we do. <laughs> I got a few of those. You even have some uh, some fur tutorials. So if you mm -hmm. wanted to like, you know, say you're like having a whole moment here, aren't you? <laughs> you know, if if you had your your adventure character going there, you could just like you could customize this to your heart's content, right? You could. Well, they're asking a lot of questions. They they, they this is I a love very, it. These are good questions. I like answering them. This is a very exciting painting for a lot of people. I think that they this see an a lot of potential. Exciting painting for me. You know this. <laughs> The, the this cape and the background and the energy here it's all really cool so it speaks to something i feel yeah and so now i'm gonna have to do something many of you are not gonna want to do at the end so i'm happy with my painting which is to put snow kind of layered in the front oh yeah there and lots of people are excited about the snow they think it's okay, okay, really good. cool because, you know, you guys might not like it and i'm like i'm gonna like it i just want to make sure that i've got this nice deep value I'm just going to scumble this. I have to have deep value and I'm, it's too bright behind is what it is. The front of this is too bright. And I need to be popping the grass over a darker value set. Like even under her cape. See, I'm going back with this dark shadow. 
I need it dark under here. And then I'm going to put the bright lit grass in. Hmm. The lit grass. The lit grass will go in. But I have to dry this because I, I put a color down that the, the lit grass is not going to look good if it was like... The shadow grass. Yeah. You have to have shadow grass in order to have lit grass. Oh, where are you going up there? You just... Went, I just... You just yeah, you know what? Sometimes I see... Uh, I know, and you got to warn me because you you're just like, I'm going to go over here and paint. I'm like, my, cu my camera's like, I'm so slow. I can't catch up with you. New cameras will totally be able to catch up with me. They're going to be so fast. I just wanted that shadow a little more. And now you're going back for some more. See, now, she's not going to be able to do this with the new cameras, man. Mm-mm. John's going to be able to get there. There, It's like... <laughs> they're, they're I'm going to draw my painting, and you explain to them how much better it's going to be soon. Oh, should I? All right. So, yeah, no, the new cameras are really, really cool. We've been looking at a lot of different ones. We've been trying out a lot of different cameras. We have, we have still a couple more that we're going to take a look at and, uh, and try out. But for the most part, we really have a good idea of which cameras we're going to get. And uh, we're really excited about how good they look and, you know, the, the precision and, you know, how quickly they can move compared to this one. So... I want to say thank you to all you guys for helping support us on that. Um, you know, it was a really big deal to have all you guys come out and help us make that possible. Uh, Woo! Just thanking everybody for the Indiegogo project. Yes. That, you know, we really appreciate that. And if you want to find out more about uh, that project and anything more, you can go to theartsherpa.com forward slash patron and, and see more information about all that that's going on. So Agree. Yeah, and we're going to have more. We're, we're, we're transitioning into giving updates over there and trying to keep uh, all of our community updated as to what's going on. Um, you'll have to bear with us as we're... Uh, there's a lot happening right now. So it's, happen it's coming, though. It's all coming. It's all coming. We're excited. We are. And I just want to say I really appreciate everyone being so supportive of the lives and the fact that it's got to be a two-person team. That's meant a lot to me because mm -hmm. I really enjoy teaching this way. I'm just deepening that green. So the mix of the green is Indian yellow. There's a little Prussian blue here. There's a little phthalo green here. And if you remember earlier, we grabbed a little cad red made a dark green. Yeah. So that's the colors that I'm working to create the grass. Right. We'll light some of this grass over here. So Steph says, this looks super fun to paint. And it I'm going to say, you know what, Steph? I challenge you to paint it. I want to see you come and paint with us. You'll have fun. You will. I promise. <laughs> you, you, may, you, you may have some frustration and some challenges that you overcome in the process of having fun. But you will have fun. Mm -hmm. And you will, you will accomplish things and have a painting at the end. So I'm just picking little highlight areas, right, for the grass so that they're, and then what I'm going to be doing is I'm coming through. Do I have any of this left? I do. I have a little. I'm getting a little more Indian yellow and in my white. Where the light is, I'm going to have the grass be um, much brighter in concentration, if that makes sense. So it's going to take me a second to just be sure and get all that worked out. This turned out really nice. This is great. I'm really happy with it. Now I know you're getting close to wrapping up here, so you want to tell us what else we've got coming up here? Uh, tomorrow is her in the woods. Oh. So we've got red going into the woods. Mm hmm And then for the big art quest, we're doing a snow white on Tuesday. Mm hmm And, uh, thanks to everyone's interest, there's now going to be some wolves during, um, the 12 Days Live, which is coming up the day, uh, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. And we will be live for Thanksgiving. That yes, that's with be our a lot friend of fun. Ian Garland, mm -hmm. which we have to get a graphic to so he can put up his promo. <laughs> <laughs> Slacking. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> We're live, Ian. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I, you know what? That excuse only works while we're live. Yep. So, 
Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I'm just going to put out a little clean paint so I can do this light. Um, just to help me make sure I've got everything I need. Because my paint's been drying. Dawn loves how intense those folds look. Yeah, me too. It turned out really good. That's kind of my that, way. That orange really did just make it sing. It does. It really does. It does. It makes it sing for me. There are other choices of red you could do. These are mine. This is how I do this. Now I feel like I want to put a hop. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you don't, if you want to add some, add some. That's what we're here for. Well, this is an experiment. It's a good experiment. But I just want to see what happens if I take a little bit of zinc and run a little of it along the highlight to imply like kind of more light Oh. reflected on a couple spots. Just feeling it. Everybody thinks this was looking better than the photo. Oh, I love it when you guys say that. Thank you so much. Just wanted it. Just a little. The pop sometimes. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. This is the, a lot of people are saying that this is, this is their favorite that you've They're, done so far. Really? Mm-hmm. I love that. Thank you. The thing about the zinc over the titanium is that I can highlight, and if I really hated it, I can get rid of it really easily. Ah. I just wanted a little bit there just to make that more visually interesting in that opening. It's a weird feeling that I had and had to deal with it. <laughs> so I'm going to make kind of this glow right here. And my first layer of the glow is going to be my Indian yellow. I probably don't even need my glazing medium for this because this is such a um, transparent color. Yeah. I'm tr I just had to stop and think if I was going to do the light first or the snow first. Mm -hmm. John knows like I get back here when I'm designing and then I get stuck in these little moments like what's the like, order hmm. I want to do? She starts to think about it and go hmm. 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 Like a Skeksis. Hmm. Hmm. All right, see, here we're going. How's that looking? Very nice. So we're starting to see the yellow. Oh, can we even see that? I can't wait till the new cameras come. Oh, yeah, you can see it. See, look over here now. I'll, I'll, when you look in the close-up camera, so you can okay. see it there. Start to. So this is a glaze, and it builds up, right? Which is why it's important to paint the things that are behind it. In a light... The, in in fire, the brightest, hottest, most intense part of it will be closest to the white light. And then it starts building colors as it goes out. So that's kind of how you get that sort of happening. So I'm taking my zinc. And I'm going to start to work the center of this. And I'm doing very energetic strokes. To sort of try to talk about... Uh, We'll call this the Van Gogh move to talk about the energy of the light source. Woo! It's a totally acceptable brush stroke. <laughs> Just so you know. Make sure that this is bright under here. As it should be, because the light would be what? Lightening the grass, right? Mm hmm. Magic grass. Magic no, it's just, if there was magic above grass and it was glowing this bright, that's, the grass would be totally impacted by the light. It would be. It would get some splash magic on it. Just creating some little radiation so we can see it. So we'll say like a magic wood fairy or nymph or energetic, you know, creature of the forest has come to save her. Oh, yeah. Julie says this looks like, you know, it's straight out of the deep fairy tale woods. Oh, yeah. You got to love it. 
I like to get deep into the fairy tale woods. I just, I don't, just don't go really. I think on fairy tales, I just don't really go Disney. But I love Disney. Mm-hmm. I think I just get more a little uh, more traditional. Yeah, I'd, I'd say yours is you. You have like these this wonderful. Uh, it's not grown up, but it is a adult sensibility to the fairy tales. That's very romantic and. Um, I don't know. It's uh, right. I would say romantic is a really good word for it. Yeah. No, it, it, well, I think fairy tales speak uh, universally to the human experience, right? Mm, they certainly can. No, that's, that's, that's how they came to be, is to talk to us about our place in the world and who we are in society and what is expected to us and the dangers of wandering off the path. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see I'm starting to brighten up the center. And this will work any time that you're trying to paint this sort of like little magic ball. As long as you remember that it's got to be br brightest, brightest, brightest as it's coming in the middle. Another reason why zinc white is my friend, because I can do this in stages. If I started this with titanium white, it would already be maybe a little overdone. I'm just lighting some of the bands coming out. A lot of ways to paint things. This is just one way. How's that looking? All right, starting to look good. Starting to. It already looks really good. <laughs> I'm going to pull a little of the yellow cast into her even more. Because it's so transparent, that works really well. Right? And that's the nice thing about the Indian yellow is it's just a very transparent yellow. Again, you could do this with cat just so much harder. Mm. Now, I'm going to rinse out my brush. And this is what's going to make this pop. So we have what this is here. And this is why it's nice to have two whites. I'm going to pull out my titanium white. And create an area of interest in the center here. Oh, yeah. Where the light is just very strong. And it's blowing out the. Yep. Oh, Is it blowing out your camera or the? No, no, no. Just like oh. sort of in the in the. It, it actually, we're right on the edge of it. So. So the, there, we did her. Yeah. Oh, you gotta sign it though. That's so. Amazing. I gotta sign it. I just want to look at it real quick. Oh. I'm really happy with here, that. Here, why don't you why don't you hold it hold it out for me so I can okay. do that. That's yeah. awesome. Oh yeah. Oh, wait, I was going to do snow on the front. You want to do some more snow? I do. I'm okay. sorry, guys. Yeah, no, it's That's great. why I haven't signed yet. But we're there. I, I, I want to have snow. If you've got a good splatter tool, you can do this. If you, you don't have do a great it. splatter tool, don't do it. If you don't, don't do it. <laughs> but practice doing it before you do it. Practice on a scratch piece of paper. You don't want to get to the end of your painting, love it, and then at this stage have a moment. Yeah, No. 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 And Don't that's not fun. No. That ruins a painting. Yeah. But I'm really confident in my tool, and I'm really confident in the results I'm going to get. I could be wrong. We're going to give it a try. But we're going to give it a try. So I'm mixing my um, Prussian blue into my uh, fluid white, and I'm doing this in a little black to have some muted snow and then some highlighted snow. Hmm. What about some John Snow? <laughs> I don't know about John Snow. I probably have to do a redeeming paint of that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I have just a little bit loaded on my splatter tool. Yeah. This is from my Galaxy set. And I really like it because it's going to let me control the splatter. That's my point is like it's about having a tool that you can trust. Because you want some splatter. Right, you want the snowflakes to be falling everywhere, but I like wouldn't want a bunch of splatters on her face, right? Because that wouldn't be ha happy making for my design. I want some just across her cloak a little bit, like like their snowflakes that are landing everywhere. I'm gonna rinse out. So you can see I managed to keep the splatter off of her face. 
and that is the big part of my trick. Now I'm going to get my bright white, which is really going to show. And to get this controlled splatter is just about, I pull my tool back just very lightly. It doesn't take a lot of dispersion to get it. And so therefore I can get a little, and then if I had to, I could always come in. Now that's, I wanted that for me. You may not want that for you, but I just really, really liked the snow mm, that flutters so everywhere. Because nice. it created some depth with the background of the foreground and, yeah, you know. Hopefully it looks good. Let me sign it. It really does. We What's the vote on the snow splatters? Yay or nay? Very much yes. Cool. Now I've got to sign this and I don't want to sign it in a way that messes her up. Mm. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into, interestingly enough, in this case, usually I'm like, don't sign it in red. But in this case, I am because it's red. Yeah. I'm not throwing any shade at Bob Ross. If Bob Ross wants to sign in red, that's all good. But it is a big red signature in a natural landscape. <laughs> so I want to come here and I'm going to just take my small detail brush. And I'm going to sign where. And I'm actually, I don't know if you can catch this, but I'm paying attention to the wrinkles that I have here. So that this is almost part of it. That's a nice thing. If you can do it, that's a great way of doing it. Framers don't like how I sign. I'm too close to the corner. Huh. Just so you know. Makes framing a, a just a nightmare for them. But I'm concerned about the art piece and they're concerned about framing it. We have just different worries. Mm -hmm. All right. So she's in snow. There's this nice active kind of glow happening. And see now how where we oranged it up. That works. Isn't that oh, crazy? Yeah. That looks really good. Then she needed that on that cool case. Anyways, thank you for coming today. Oh my gosh, we've had such a crowd of people here. This has been a wonderful, wonderful chat. Thank you guys for coming and sharing this time with us. I totally look forward to seeing all these paintings. Be to good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And we want to see you at the easel really soon, which means tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bye.